Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Welcome. I'm Bob Riggles, one of the pastors here on staff at Florist United Methodist Church. Tom Berlin is with me this morning, and we want to thank you for gathering with us this morning for virtual worship. Those of you that are joining us at Restoration Worldwide, some of you might be joining us on Florist Facebook page. We want to thank you for spending time with us and encourage you, if you are here, take a moment to text your attendance to Florist here at 31996. We want to make sure that we know you're joining us and find out ways to help connect you to life and ministry here at Flores. want to invite you to think of participating in some of the upcoming events we have this week. And one of the things, first of all, is after today's worship service, there'll be a meet and greet hosted by Reverend Ashley Allen. You'll see the Zoom link posted in the chat screen, either on Restoration Worldwide or on the Facebook page. But we hope you'll take a few minutes to meet a few others and to participate in that today. Also coming up, on May 21st, there's an opportunity to do a live group, a life group in um, studying the Faithful and Inclusive series. Ashley Allen is going to be leading that as well. And it talks about ways that we can be obedient to God's word and fully welcoming to LGBTQ persons in the church. If you'd like to participate in that, you'll find a place to register online in our life group section. We hope you'll join us in, in that in many other ways. We are also going to have virtual family bingo night. And uh, Bob, can I just say yeah. something? Yeah. I love bingo, and I'm not kidding. I think it's <laughs> fabulous. When I was a kid, I almost won a very big bingo. I was this close, people. And ever since, I've loved bingo. So we're going to do this on uh, Friday, May the 15th at 6.30 p.m. Kelly Crespin and I are going to host that event. I think it's going to be really fun. There'll be electronic bingo cards uh, that, uh, you know, obviously you'll be at your home and uh, you'll be able to fill out the cards. We'll call out the numbers and it's just going to be great. So uh, you can register online and registration is going to close on May the 14th. So you might want to just go ahead and do that. Uh, if you go to the Flourish UMC page, you'll find the family bingo. So come be a part of that. Yeah, those are just a few of the ways you can connect virtually during this time. And as Tom was saying, you want to keep going to floristumc.org, check out what's happening in our life and ministry here, or use your Floris app. We want to make sure that we're staying together in this time apart to be the family of God in many creative ways. One of those ways that you and your family might do that after the service is to follow the Nearpod link. You'll see that for the kids ministry opportunity. It's another great way to continue to grow and learn about what God's doing in and through our lives. Uh, with that, I think that's all of our announcements this morning, but we want to move into worship. We have a lot planned for us today. So we're going to start off with a video for Mother's Day. I hope you'll enjoy this. I love you, mommy. <laughs> I love you, mom. I love you, Mom. <laughs> I love you, Mom. I love you, Mom. Mom, you're the best. We love you. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mom. Hey, I'm Obama. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. Hope you have a great day. I love you. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Wow, that was so exciting to see all the kids wishing their moms a happy Mother's Day. As we continue in worship this morning, we want to prepare a space. Some of you may have been doing your home worship table, your little altars. You'll see that we've got our gratitude jar at our little home altar today. But we're going to light these candles and invite God's Holy Spirit to be with us during this time of worship. And I hope you'll join us doing the same at home. Let us continue in worship. Joyful 
Thank you for leading us in that worship this morning. We want to move into a time of prayer now, and I'd invite you that if you would like to add to your little altar table your uh, list of prayer concerns, we're going to be sharing some of the congregants that we'd like to encourage you to pray for this week. Maybe you have some other names that you'd like to add to that list, but we do want to lift up these brothers and sisters before us that we're continuing in prayer for. We'd like to have you pray for Jim Allred, who's continuing through cancer treatment. Susan Gonzalez, who's also continuing with her cancer treatment. We have two sisters in our congregation, Tyra Norwood and Dana Kuntz, and their father, Pete Settle, just passed away. They're going to be um, having his service this week. We want to pray for that family, the family of Pete Settle. And Roger Frost is having a procedure on Tuesday. Please continue to play, pray for the Frost family. Doug Gant is um, dealing with COVID-19. We have a few other congregants that we know are just coming out of recovering from COVID-19 and some that are also having the onset of those symptoms. We want to pray for not only our congregants, but those in our community. And finally, Suzanne Jones is recovering this week from surgery for a broken arm. We want to lift up these names and others before us this day as we pray with and for one another. We want to lift up the celebrations of our heart, the thanksgiving that we have, as well as those who we would pray for God's healing physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Right now, though, I'd like to share um, a Mother's Day prayer for those of us that are gathered. And I'd invite you to bow your heads and lift your hearts as we share together in this time of prayer. Lord, we pray for all the mothers among us today, for all who hope to be mothers someday, and for those who hope to have children but have been frustrated in their efforts. We pray for all mothers who have lost children. We lift up today our own mothers, both living and those who have passed away and whether our mothers loved us well or perhaps struggled and fell short of loving us fully, we invite your Holy Spirit to work in and through them, to bless them and keep them. We think of role models and mentors this day for women and men who have mothered us and others in any way necessary at the most important moments in our lives. Pour out your love and grace upon those who have been our substitute mothers and we who have done so for those in need. Gracious Lord, we lift to you our Mother Earth, our Mother Church, and we praise you, God, for your mothering heart that protects and nurtures us, gentle and fierce, strong and humble, kind and true. We are blessed, for you have provided loving hands that have worked so hard in raising us, cared enough to correct us, blessed us in ways we cannot 
fully know as children. And although we can't fully express our gratitude, help each one of us to be your blessing of love this day. As we pray together that prayer which Jesus shared with his disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine thine is the the kingdom kingdom and the power and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Feliz Día de las Madres. Te amo, Mamá. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. I love you, Mama. I love you, Mommy. Te amo, Mommy. I love you, Mom. Te amo, Mama. We love you, Mom. Te amo, Mama. I love you, Mom. We love you, Mom. Te amo, Mama. We love you, Mommy. We love you, Mommy and Mama. We love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Kelly Crespin. I'm director of Children's and Family Ministries here at Flores UMC. And I have to say, I am so happy to be here. We are going to be starting um, this new sermon series, and we are going to be talking about joy today. Now, if you can see here, I have two words on the front of my table. One says happiness, and one says joy. Now, in school, you might have learned what synonyms are. They're words that kind of sound, uh, they might sound different. They mean kind of the same thing, but not exactly. And happiness and joy are two of those words. So the difference between the two is that happiness is external. Happiness is what we have when someone gives us something or someone compliments us, maybe. Happiness is something that, well, if I find $100 today, I'm going to be so happy. Or if I get a new electronic game, I'm going to be so happy. But joy, joy is similar, but it's internal. It doesn't matter how much stuff we have or where we go or even if people are nice to us. Joy is what we feel in our hearts, and joy is what Jesus gives us. And when we have joy... No matter what our circumstances are, we can feel joy. Now, I want to show you a little, a, a little experiment here to kind of show you the difference between the two. So I have this empty, empty canister here, and this represents us, all of us. And you notice it's empty because if we don't have Jesus in our lives, we feel like this, just kind of empty. And so some people think, you know, If I had more stuff, if I had a new house, if I had a new car, if I had more toys, if I had more anything, then I'd be happy. I'd feel joy. But you notice it doesn't do anything for you. And then some people think, well, you know, wow, if I had more electronics, if I had more iPad time, or if I had a new laptop, or I had more time to watch TV, I'd be happy and I'd have joy, but nothing happens really. And then some people think, well, you know, what, what's going to make me have joy is if I get to travel. You know, I'd love to go to Disney World or the beach, or, or it might even be I get to go somewhere in my hometown. Maybe mom will take me to a movie or something like that. But you notice that doesn't bring happiness at all. And so the last thing, though, is Jesus. Now, if we have Jesus in our lives, these things might make us happy for a little while, but we don't have that overflowing, amazing joy that we feel when we have Jesus. And when we add Jesus to our lives, then you can see we overflow with joy. We are happy. And no matter what our circumstances are, no matter what we have for toys or where we are for electronics, we can feel that joy in our lives. And so I hope that you guys, this next week and all the weeks to come, try to focus on the joy in your life. It's not how much stuff you have or the fact that we're trapped at home and can't really go anywhere because of the pandemic. But the joy in our lives 
comes from Jesus. Thank you guys for letting me join you today. And next week, come back again because we're going to talk about faith. I want to take a few moments and talk about giving here at Flourish United Methodist Church and just how grateful I am for your remarkable generosity during this time. Some of you have asked, you know, how's the church giving going? Just in the general fund. And, and I want to tell you, um, at the end of April, I just looked at some numbers yesterday, uh, we're doing okay. Um, we, we have enough money to pay our bills. We've not had um, to release anyone because of the, the pandemic and, and the effect of that on the economy. You all have been so faithful. In fact, um, your online giving has moved from about 50% of us who give online to 58% of us. That helps. You've used the new text function, which I hope you'll use today, um, if that helps you to give electronically. Um, and because of that, our ministry is happening. And I want to give you one great example. Um, as you know, <clears throat> we're doing something called Camp Together. And I just asked Kelly um, before this service began, you know, how many people are, are part of that? And she said, you know, currently there are 716 people participating in Camp Together. That's 153 packets sent out to families um, that are enjoying Camp Together at this time. Um, there are 34 of those families that are outside of the state of Virginia. Um, eight of those families have children with special needs. There's a Facebook group that started so that families will have the opportunity to, you know, connect each other and hear good ideas and share some resources. Um, and so our ministry continues to happen and that, that spiritual nourishment that we're all looking for, that's one example of the types of things that are happening. So thanks for, for what you're doing. Um, I also um, want to let you know that our COVID-19 relief fund, I just found this out, is over $136,000 right now. That's the total giving. Now, we're starting to, to dispense that as I've announced in weeks past. This week, can I tell you what we did this week? Um, and, and this is some good news. So let me tell you some good news. Let me tell you something good. That's what I want to say. Um, we had a call from the Loud and Abused Women's Shelter. They had an opportunity for a $25,000 matching grant. And so they're calling different faith communities saying, can you help us out? We'd really like to, to capture all of that matching grant. Their expenses have gone up. Um, because of the pandemic, they had to close down their shelter. And women and children that are at risk have been put in hotels so that um, they have their own contained space. And then they're having to get food to them every day. So that expense has gone up. And as you may have heard, sadly, during this quarantine, domestic violence has gone up a bit. And so those individuals um, are incurring, well, the, the shelter is incurring a larger expense. So they called and said, could you all help? And we just said, you know, we took a look at, at your generosity and we, we said to them, we want to tell you something good. And we gave, Flores gave, in restoration, we gave $10,000 toward that $25,000 grant. And the director of the shelter was just overjoyed at that level of generosity. That's what you did. You made that happen. And I just want to thank you for um, being the type of people who, and some of you have told me, you've said, you know what, I just turned over um, the, the check that I was going to get from the stimulus check. Our family chose to do that. Um, I, I heard of a young adult this week who did that. He's just starting out. And so I'm just really, really grateful. Also want to let you know that many of you are still using the neighborhood box uh, and you're putting this out. This is my really fancy one. Um, somebody heckled me just this morning that maybe I could spend a little bit more time on my neighborhood box. But as you see, it's going to these organizations. Um, by the way, She Believes in Me has asked us to announce they need not just food items that are listed, but also now um, health items. And those health items would include things like cleaning supplies, laundry detergent. The laundry detergent can be the small amounts because the volunteers have to get this to them. They don't want the really big jars, but smaller amounts. Shampoo feminine hygiene products, diapers, um, and health-related items, uh, diapers and wipes, but also health-related items like um, Tylenol or cough syrup for people that already have COVID and are dealing with that at home. So friends, if you can give any of those items plus all the others on our website, we'd really appreciate it. This now is the time to give. I want to invite you to use your mobile app. You can give there. You can text that. You'll see the sc on the screen um, the number for, to text right now if you'd like to give that way. Uh, I want to say, as Bob said earlier, remember to register your attendance. Um, all of those things are happening 
right now and thanks for everything that you're doing. I love you, Mom. Te amo, Mamá. I love you, Mom. I love you, Mom. We love you, Mom. We love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. We love you, Mom. Is Mommy beautiful? What's your favorite mm. color? Purple? Mm. Does she love you? Mm. No matter what? Mm -hmm. Say, I love you, Mama. I love you, Mom. I love you, Mom. Hi, Mom. I love you. We love you, Mom. <laughs> um, I love you, Mom. Mm. We, love we love you, you Mom. mom. That's great. I just don't know that I can see enough of those invitations of love and joy. I hope that you're having as much uh, excitement watching them this morning. But as we prepare for our message, I'm going to invite you to prepare your hearts to hear the reading of God's Word. Our scripture reader this morning is Audrey Murphy. Let us listen to today's scripture passage. This scripture today is Romans 12, 9 through 13. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope. 
patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Thanks be to God for the gift of the scripture. Hey, thanks, Audrey. Uh, it was just so very, very, very well done. I really appreciate it. And happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Um, there's, there's rarely been a year when I can imagine that people could be any more grateful for moms than this year. I was on a Zoom call with a mom the other day who is a pastor. It was a, it was a meeting and um, she's a friend and, and she kept, during the Zoom call, she has two small children and during the Zoom call, you could just sort of see her pause and look over and, and go like this, you know, and give the thumbs up and, and then sometimes do like this. And, and I could tell that she was moving. Her, all of her spaces were doing this. And she was just balancing that beautifully. And I, as in the chat box, I said, um, I said, how are you doing over there uh, with everything? And she <laughs> typed back, I'm digging deep right now. And, and I bet a lot of moms are digging deep. I bet a lot of moms. Uh, you're balancing so many things. You're trying to do school. You're trying to keep your family sort of happy in a quarantine. Kids can't be with their friends. I, I mean, we all know the list. I just want you to know you're appreciated for the list. You're appreciated in the, in the midst of everything you're doing. And I know it's not easy. Um, I hope that you're giving yourself what I talked about last week, some self-compassion. Uh, that knowledge that you just don't have to be perfect. And let that inform the love you have for your family and for your kids. Um, once you sort of ease off that feeling of perfectionism, um, it'll allow you just to bring out your best self and call the best out of others. Um, it's not easy, but hey, you're a mom. That's, uh, that's sort of a superhero role from the very beginning. So anyway, thanks for that. Uh, I want if you bow your heads with me and join me in a word of prayer and pray for me and with me as I begin this message. Because I'm hoping this is a message that's going to be helpful to moms and to dads and to everybody else. Um, so if you'd bow your heads. Lord, thank you um, for this time. I want to pray that whenever people see this, whether it's live right now or whether it's um, later in the week, and no matter where they watch from, we have people watching from different parts of the world. I pray that this message will be a blessing and I pray that you will speak through it. I'm not so much worried about my words. I'm far more concerned about the movement of the Holy Spirit and the way that you can reach out and touch people and open their minds and hearts to a message you want them to hear. Thank you for the inspirations you've given for this time and I pray that uh, all will be done in keeping with your desire in Christ's name, amen. Well, it is, as I said, Mother's Day, and I, um, I think what most moms want for their kids is um, just that they would enjoy life. Um, I think moms always want kids to have a good life, a great life. When I was a child, I was one of those people that had a great life. I didn't know it then. You know, you, you never know it then. You, you know it later. In fact, many years later. But I did. Um, I had a good home, I was safe, I had friends, uh, there, were, there were great meals, there was laughter, there was joy, there were vacations, there, it was just a great life. And yet, I remember as a child, I, I remember it vividly, I could be discontent for so many reasons. It was just remarkable when I look back on it now. I was discontent sometimes when I didn't have the book I wanted to read or when I, I couldn't watch the TV or when I had to do my homework. I, I was discontent sometimes when my brother got a gift that I didn't receive. And, and I remember just being really pouty and frustrating. And, and never mind that it was his birthday. Never mind that. I was still really irritated that he got a gift and I didn't. Uh, I was discontent if it was too hot and discontent if it was too cold. Many reasons to complain to my mom about many situations. And one of the best gifts my mother gave me, one of the best gifts my mother gave me was the knowledge that there is something beyond your circumstances, that you can't let your circumstances control whether you find what the Bible calls joy, joy in life. And here's what she knew. Happiness was elusive. She also knew that there were much harder things in life than I was going to experience, and she had to equip me for that. She had to prepare me for what I was going to experience as I got older and entered what we often call real life. Now, the, the life I had as a child was a real life, 
but it wasn't dependent on me. I was the dependent. And what she did really well was to prepare me for that time when it would depend on me and to find joy in all circumstances. Recently, a while back, um, Bob Dylan, get this, Bob Dylan was interviewed by AARP magazine. I know that makes me sad too, right? I mean, I remember when Dylan was on the Rolling Stone, but, but he was interviewed by AARP. If, that's, if you're feeling a little bit old today, I'm right in there with you. And, and what he talked about was, uh, he talked about his music, but he, but he also talked about this question of happiness. And Bob Dylan says, um, when asked if he had ever touched and held happiness, that was the question, have you ever touched and held happiness? I thought that was an interesting way to put it. Dylan replied, we all do at certain points, but it's like water. It slips through your hands. As long as there's suffering, he write, he said, you can only be so happy. How can a person be happy if they have misfortune? I wish Bob Dylan's mom would have taught him what my mom taught me. And I'm not saying that with any superiority. But my mom taught me there's going to be misfortune. And you've got to figure out how you're going to find joy in the midst of that. Now, I think that my mom had an advantage. She read the Bible. And she had read the words of the scripture. And my mother and my father raised us in the church. And they didn't just go to church. They wanted us to have the Christian life. And part of that life was thinking about how to have a joy that is, transcends your circumstances. And during this pandemic, friends, that is an incredibly important thing to be talking about. And, and if you want to tell, you tell your family something good, or if you want to tell your family something good, I'm sorry, if you want to tell yourself something good, if you're somebody who's alone, and, you know, you're spending your days primarily alone. The good thing I encourage you to tell yourself is that your faith in Christ is a resource at all times and in all places and in all circumstances. And the Apostle Paul really helped us understand that because his life was rough. I mean, it was really rough. Um, He had chronic health condition, which he called a thorn in my flesh. And he said, I prayed about it for years and God's never delivered me from this thorn in my flesh. We don't really know what it was. But we do know that Paul had a really hard life because he's also persecuted for his faith. I I can just imagine the Apostle Paul traveling to his home where he grew up and and sitting down with his mom and and him looking at his mom saying, Mom, I'm just not very happy and his mom's saying, well, well, honey, what happened? What, what happened to you? And he said, well, you know, I was beaten. I was thrown out of town. I was put in jail. I was flogged. I was pelted with rocks by a crowd. I was shipwrecked. I was bit by a snake. I was derided and injured because of my faith in Christ. I don't think Paul ever got even to talk to his mom about all that. I think he just had to endure it. And I think he was equipped to endure it because of his faith in Christ. Paul never talks in the Bible about how to be happy. He just didn't. He didn't talk about here's the formula for happiness. But he did write about something better, which is joy. And joy is that quality we can experience that transcends all things. And that's why he wrote, and you, you heard it read today, Baldry, be joyful in hope, be patient in affliction, and be faithful in prayer. Paul knew the difference between happiness and joy. The quality that he calls us to experience is joy. And he knew that happiness was deeply dependent on circumstances that you can't control. Happiness is dependent on everything from the weather to the stock market. And even circumstances which we can control, but which we often don't control very well. So let me tell you about something good. Tell you something good. Joy is not dependent on your circumstances. And joy doesn't require you to nail it every single day and get it right every single day. Joy is found in a deeply integrated relationship with Jesus Christ. And that deep integration is what's really important. It can't be a thing you do one day a week or one hour a week. It has to be something that is just a part of you. 
Paul references his relationship to Christ when he opens up this section in, in verse 9. And he says this. He says, love must be sincere. Now, just take a look at that for a moment. Love must be sincere. And what did he mean by that? Well, we've all seen what a sincere love looks like. And again, it's Mother's Day, so let's just stay there for a moment. I have watched mothers watching their children on playgrounds with the biggest smile on their face. And it's amazing that these mothers are sometimes out in the heat or in a, a mild rain, but they're, they're happy, not because of their circumstances, not because this is like, wow, this is the most interesting thing I can think of. They're happy because their children are happy. Better stated, they're joyful because their children are happy in that moment. I've seen mothers sitting in stands at athletic events for high school students and middle school students. I've seen them tenderly care for a child in an ICU when everything was up in the air. And I've seen that love is sincere. I've seen mothers laugh with their child as, as a child talks to them. Um, I've seen mothers look at a baby inside of a crib and there's a mob mobile up above the child and the child is sort of cooing and talking and making noises as it spins above them. And, and as the child raises their hand to reach up to that, there's just this delight on the face of a mother. That's what a sincere love looks like. I've seen the anguish of a mother trying to afford a van with a wheelchair lift for a daughter in a wheelchair. And I've seen the joy on the face of a mother whose daughter was safely placed inside that van for the first time and every time, knowing that her daughter is going to be safe. This love of Christ that Paul talks, us about, talks to us about when he says love must be sincere is a love that is sacrificial, it's a love that's joyful, and it's a love that's persistent. And I've seen so many mothers whose love of Christ, hear that, whose love of Christ enabled them to live out these words, love must be sincere. And the problem that many moms have and that many dads have and that many people have is we've got these days when we just feel like we've run out of it. You know, it's like the Clorox wipes. Eventually you run out. But what Paul's telling us is that, that this love that must be sincere is not only the love that we're called to show others, it's the love that we have for Christ and that Christ has for us. So this integrated relationship with Christ becomes the wellspring from which we draw. And it's a spring that keeps refilling. And so we draw that love from Christ and then we have our love for Christ, and from that pool, we, we draw out love, which we then extend to others. And friends, sometimes people don't love very well. And I've talked to people who, who really struggled to love their, even their children well. And, and some of those folks have no relationship with Christ whatsoever. And what I know is I can give them many books on how to be a better parent, but there is a wellspring that I want to hand them and I want to point them to, and I do point them to, to say the love that we experience from God, the grace we experience from God, the forgiveness we experience from God, the assurance that if we die, we'll have eternal life. Like that love, the, the love that Jesus showed you and me on a cross sacrificial love is the love that we draw from when we're trying to love the people around us. And I, I really don't know how you do it consistently without that. Somebody may, but I've never seen anybody do it really, really well. And so that's why I'm calling you to really think about your relationship with Christ today. Because this faith in Christ is a source of the joy and the love that flows from our wonder of God's love and God's mercy. And, and not only that, once you have that, that relationship with God and, and you develop it and integrate it, it just makes you so grateful. Part of the joy 
is that you become so grateful for almost everything. Um, you become joyful for the world, for the creation itself, the world in which we live. You become joyful about nature. You want to care for things rather than destroy them. And so Paul says to us, be joyful in hope. And, and the hope is our hope in Christ and our hope in the love of God that God has for us. I was reading um, author Peggy Noonan. And Peggy Noonan writes this in, in her book um, called John Paul the Great. And I'm just going to read you a short excerpt. And this is after Peggy Noonan became a Christian. She reflected on that experience and the joy that made her more loving and reverent of everything around her. She writes, Here's something I began to feel after I had faith. The unexpected joy of living things. At some point, living things began to seem precious to me, and I wanted to pet them and hug them. Hey, you're, you're having that experience right now, aren't you? Right? Like that desire to hug something, hold on to something, that appreciation for the living things around you. She continues. She says, um, pet them, hug them. Babies and dogs and lizards, whatever. For me, the great fruit of belief is joy. There is a God. There is a purpose. There is a meaning to things. There are realities we cannot guess at. There is a big peace and you are a part of it. God is good. Near him is where you want to be. There is something called everlasting joy and St. Paul, a fiercely imperfect man who was also a great man, was granted visions of it. And that great user of words was floored by it and said, no one can imagine how wonderful it is. The human imagination cannot encompass it. Such joy, which transcends circumstances, and that's what you want to teach your children, that there's a joy that transcends your circumstances, allows us to be, in Paul's words, you ready? You're, this is very high tech. Are you ready for it? It enables us to be patient in affliction now tell me that's not a lesson that needs to be in all of our homes right now no matter what age you are no matter who you are no matter what your responsibilities are Paul says that if we're joyful in hope we can be patient in affliction and that's going to be really important because what my mom taught me is that there would be hard times in life and you have to know you have to become a master of your own life and your own emotions, and your own worldview, you have to learn how to be patient in affliction. And it's a hard lesson for mature people. But of course, that's what faith does, is it matures us. How do we do that? Well, again, we have to have an integrated faith in Christ that touches every aspect of our life. And I'll tell you, when our hope is in Christ, it's, we have the, Christians have this experience where we get swept up in a way of being and seeing the world that helps us find joy that is essential to us right now. Author Mark uh, Judge wrote about a concert he attended in 2008, and this, um, this article um, was, was found in a in a publication, but it would happen right up at the Strathmore Center, right in our area. Um, he said that there were musicians and dancers from all around the globe. It was a big program, and the singers came out, and the, the dancers came out, and he said it was really a fabulous program. But after almost three hours, it, it was an awards ceremony of sorts, and he said after almost three hours, the, it was time for the curtain call, one last bow to the end of the evening. And he said the host reintroduced everybody who had been there, and there was a featured jazz band, and it began to play When the Saints Go Marching In. And then he said something totally unplanned happened. He said the audience at the Strathmore rose to its feet to acknowledge the, the winners of the awards that had been given out in between the acts. And it seemed at that time like one last blast of applause before the exit, but 
as they began to applaud, they started getting in, in sync with when the saints go marching in. And when that happened, the performers, all the different performers without planning this, began to dance. And the jazz band, sensing that something was really happening, that something was in the air, got louder and they kept playing and playing and playing. And on stage, the performers formed a conga line. And so pretty soon there's this whole big conga line. And then they formed a circle and each time they, they I guess they opened it up so the audience could see it, but the, the different dancers and performers would step into the middle of the circle and they'd do their thing. They'd play their instrument or they would, they would dance their dance. And then they'd step out and other people. And he said, um, the, the, the invisible line between the performance and the audience evaporated. It turned into one big party or maybe a revival meeting. And author, um, he, he writes this, he said, author Stephen Mitchell once described a holy joy so large that it is no longer inside of you, but you are inside of it. Now, once you hear that again, Mitchell said, there is a holy joy so large, it's no longer inside of you. So often that's the way we talk about our faith, isn't it? That I, you know, I want to get the joy into me. But he says, no, no, there's this joy that you step into and you're inside that joy. And he, he writes, um, again, this is back to the article that Judge wrote. He said, um, no one wanted to leave that night. I honestly believe the band could have played for another hour and no one would have moved toward the exits. Staggering outside, I heard one woman say that she was swimming in joy. I myself was speechless, he writes. Like everyone else, I just wanted to stay inside the joy. Friends, can I ask you a really serious question in the middle of this pandemic? How's your relationship with Christ? How's that doing? Have you stepped inside the joy of the Lord? That's a phrase the Bible uses. It's in Nehemiah, actually. Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. I'm not asking you about your circumstances. I, I have a sense of those. I don't know all of them, but I know many of them. I'm asking you about your relationship with the Lord. Are you joyful in the hope of Christ in your life? Are you joyful in your salvation, your forgiveness, the forgiveness of your sins, the assurance of eternal life? Do you have gratitude to God for the simple gifts of grace in all their many forms? Are you appreciative of the people that are around you? Or have you gotten to that place in quarantine where it's just like pick, pick, pick? See, there's a joy that's transcendent. And it's above our circumstances, but it allows us to lift up and enter into a space of greater understanding of God's goodness and the goodness of our very lives and the goodness of the people around us. And once we get into that place, we are so much better equipped to share a love that is sincere. Have you asked Jesus to come to you in prayer? Because that's that last piece. Paul says if you want, that love must be sincere. And he says, be joyful in hope and be patient in affliction. And I know you may be saying like, Tom, how? Like this thing's been seven weeks long, however long it's been now. And he, Paul gives you the, the key at the very end. He says, be faithful in prayer. Again, can I just ask you a question for your own, your own self-assessment? I've got to ask this to me too. In your life, are you faithful in prayer? Because what, what, it's really interesting. Love must be sincere. That's verse 9. Verse 12, be joyful in hope. And we're all like, yeah, I want to do that. Be patient in affliction. I'd like to do that. But then Paul says, be faithful in prayer. And I don't know about you, but I really have to make that time. I have to program that. I have to think about that time if it's going to happen. During this time of pandemic, I strongly encourage you to develop your prayer life. You can do this in so many ways within the Christian tradition. It is not one size fits all. You can keep a journal where you write your prayer each day. And it might be that long. 
but that could be really helpful. You can meditate. That's in the Christian tradition. You can find silence. You can pray a psalm or a piece of other scripture. You can open the psalm and read it out loud. Make that your prayer if you're having a hard time praying. You can find some way to set aside just at the beginning maybe five minutes. But those of you who have a richer prayer life, longer. We are doing prayer now for florists. There's a, a group that, that is praying morning and also evening. You could join that group. If you're not sure how, send me an email. I'll connect you. Yoon Nam is one of the leaders, along with uh, Cynthia Lipinski, who's a member of our church. You could email them and say, get me into that prayer group. Why? Because meeting with others would bring you the discipline. And Paul says that that's the key to beginning this life where we are patient in affliction and joyful in hope. Now, friends, it's your habits. It's your habits over time that that make all the difference. And that's true of anybody, anywhere. Some of you may remember the Olympic commercial from Ameritrade way back in 2009. Louis Vito was um, the first place snowboarder that year. And they ran these fantastic ads. And, and I remembered that this past week. And I just want to show you, this is, this is an ad that, that details his life. And it starts at the success but what I want you to notice is everything that went into his life from the time he was this big that got him to the place where he was so capable at a, as an adult. And you have to believe his family built around him a way for all that to happen. Take a look. Behind every big moment are lots of little ones. Hey, mom, are you preparing your child for the big moment that's ahead? Are you getting them ready for the time when circumstances simply cannot dictate joy because you won't be there to make all the circumstances just right? Dads have to do that. We, but you know what? Those of you who don't have any kids around, those of you who are single, all of us, it's, we're all in the same boat on this thing. If we are persistent in our life in Christ, through prayer, through acts of mercy and justice, through the goodness of our faith, we find that we can be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, persistent in prayer. Paul's big moments of joy in times of affliction arose out of lots of small moments done during that time and in all the years prior where he solidified his trust in God and he integrated his faith with his life so that when he finally met Jesus, all was well. In the third century, there was a man named Cyprian who was anticipating his death and he wrote these words to a friend. He said, it's a bad world, Donatus, that he was writing to this friend, Donatus, an incredibly bad world, but I've discovered in the midst of it a great and quiet people I'm sorry, a quiet and good people who have learned the great secret of life. They have found a joy and a wisdom that are a thousand times better than the pleasures of a sinful life. They are despised and persecuted, but they care not. They are masters of their souls. They've overcome the world. These people, Donatus, are Christians, and I am one of them. And they found a joy and a wisdom which is a thousand times better than any pleasures. I love the phrase, they are masters of their soul. Are you a master of your own soul? Or do you let your circumstances dictate your happiness? I want you to find a joy in the Lord. That's something really good I can tell you. Now, this week our band got together and uh, they put together a song for this time about the joy that's in your heart. I, friends, I want you to have a, a joy in your heart, but I want you to also step into a circle of joy. But when you watch this video, I think that's exactly what they've done. Take a look.
don't you miss the band and the choir and the handbells and everything? Don't you just miss it all so much? Um, friends, I really appreciate what the band just offered to us and the fact that a guinea pig made the song actually made my day. I hope it did yours too. I want to give you a benediction and then I want to invite you to stay just a little bit longer. Um, after this benediction, last week some friends of ours in the church um, sent us a, a video link and that's what I, I want to show you. Um, they're from the UK and they attend Flores. It's the Huttons, um, Andrew and Catherine Hutton. And it really meant the world to Catherine that her son, who is in England right now while they're here, sent her this video. And it's a, a video compilation. Uh, it's a, a musical video compilation from churches in the UK that all work together to create this really beautiful uh, benediction. And I especially wanted to use it today because I think it, it could be what I want you to experience as it's a blessing for us all. And I experience that as a man uh, who when I watch it. But what I want you to do if you're a mom is I want you to hear it through your mom ears. And I want you to hear the Lord speaking to you. And blessing you. Because you're really working hard. You're really giving your best. And I've talked to so many mothers who have said it's, it's tough, you know. But they're doing it. They're getting up every day and they're doing it with joy. And I think, if you'll watch this, I think God is going to give you a message that you're going to find to be a blessing. I know my, my, my wife did, and uh, our kids are grown, but it was just such a blessing, and it was to me too. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up upon you. And may the Lord give you peace in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive this blessing.
We pray a blessing, manna rain down from heaven. This isn't second guessing, we know that we are protected. May the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message. Grace and favors in your nature, in your essence. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations. And your family, and your children, and the children, and the children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations. And your family, and your children, and the children, and the children. Be a party and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children.